Hello and welcome back to another episode of the iApple Guy. I recently picked up a Macintosh SE for 40 euros. Um, it's very filthy but it also doesn't work and that's one of the reasons also why it is so cheap. Um, well, cheaper than most Mac SEs on eBay and whatnot. It doesn't boot up but it instead gives us a sad Mac error. So I personally am a beginner to this type of stuff and haven't had a sad Mac error before so this should be interesting. Okay, so let's boot up this Mac. And one of the problems you'll see here is that it, well, the first thing is that you see these lines on the screen, but that's, uh, that's a problem with the analog board. That's, um, it probably, well, I'm pretty sure it needs a recap. I mean, yeah, that's bad. But anyways, so we get, it tries to boot, but we get a sad Mac error. This looked like a soft error and the top row of the error actually indicated that the power on or hardware test had succeeded. So I assumed that this was actually a system error like the internal hard drive has a bad driver map, bad partition signature or bad directory block. So I decided to unplug the hard drive that was also upgraded. Somebody actually, um, upgraded this thing and put a 1.2 gigabyte quantum fireball in here and I'm kind of suspecting that this is a system fault so what I'll do is just um, disconnect the hard drive and see if that fixes anything. Um, so what I did is disconnect the power cable, hard drive power cable and data cable and let's see if it still gives the I think system sat Mac error. Okay, so that's kind of a good sign actually. It's looking for a hard drive, but it's not finding anything. Well, it's looking for a system actually. And now it's trying to boot off of this floppy, which will not work. And wow, the eject gears still work. That's great. And there we go. Problem solved. It was a system error. Okay, so let's either leave it like this or um, reinstall the OS and I actually have a couple of um, I should actually have a couple of uh, 800k discs in here I think let me grab one oh here we go it's actually for the SE30 but whatever let's grab a disc it's 800k no this is a high density one just a system disc I once use this on a Mac Plus so this should work and I believe this is system 6 so let's try it out actually before I stick it in there I want to check if it's not damaging any discs and looks fine so okay and then this happened and yep there we go that <laughs> my friends, is a fully functional Mac SE. It might not look good and oh my god, that analog board. <laughs> look at that screen. Oof. Mm, I hope uh, the CRT is very dim as well. This actually might be a bad tube or... At first I thought that this might be an analog board problem, but after using the CRT for a while, it became clear that this SE has a very worn out screen. I tried turning the brightness up which worked but caused the picture to be blurry and the retrace lines also became visible because I believe the G2 voltage is way too high when I turn up the brightness. This is about as good as I'm gonna get it. Unfortunately, very dim. I thought about rejuvenating this CRT but that's not always a permanent solution and I also don't have tools that can actually do that so at some point I'll probably end up replacing the screen in this thing. 
In this episode I mainly want to clean up the case because it's looking a bit disgusting. You might have noticed that the Apple logo has been looking a little faded in some shots. Well, that's because I kinda DIY fixed it. I touched up the red part of the Apple logo with a marker. Definitely not a professional fix, but it works and actually looks better. I'll now open the machine by unscrewing the four, or rather two, T15 Torx screws at the back of the machine since a previous owner seems to have taken out the top two screws. Looks like they either forgot or didn't want to put the screws back in there. You can watch my video on restoring a Mac Classic 2 or look up videos on YouTube if you want to see this process in more detail. Before working on one of these you need to discharge the CRT. Be sure to check out how to do that safely. I'll put a how to discharge the CRT in a compact mag video in the info card in the top right corner of your screen right now. I'll connect the ground to my screwdriver with some alligator clips and then slide the screwdriver under the anode cap, holding it there for 10 seconds or so to make sure that it has been fully discharged. I thought that the Mac had some kind of expansion, but this port doesn't seem to be connected to anything. I asked some people if they could identify this port, and now I'm 99% sure that this was actually used to hook up an Apple PC 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. The port and the ribbon cable are still in the machine, but someone took out the actual card. Let's talk about the logic board first. Um, I have no idea why I removed it last, but I did in this clip. The first thing I did was remove the PRAM battery to prevent it from leaking all over the board and causing corrosion. I think it already started actually, you can see a little bit of corrosion here around the battery contacts. I'm actually happy that the Mac SEs don't use those infamous SMD or surface mount capacitors on the board. Those give me a hard time on my Macintosh Classics motherboard. I'm not sure if I'll be recapping this thing, the caps seem to be going strong and not a whole lot of people recap the logic board in compact Macs older than the Macintosh SE30 which was the first compact Mac to use those SMD capacitors. The analog board however I probably will be recapping. I need to order a bunch of caps for not only my Apple IIc setup but also this Mac SE anyway. Here I removed the screen and frame. I removed the HDD from the bracket that holds the hard drive and the floppy drive. The hard drive in this thing is actually upgraded. This is a quantum fireball drive with a whopping 1.2 gigabytes of storage. Unfortunately, this machine has an 800k disk drive that, yes, only takes 800k disks slash double-sided disks or lower instead of the standard 3.5 inch 1.4 megabyte floppy disks. I do know how to make these discs and have the ability to make discs that this machine can actually read, so I'm not really worried about that. But I really feel like buying myself something like a SCSI to SD or a blue SCSI kit though, just to make life easier. Now the only thing left is this speaker and the Apple logo. The speaker is actually molded into the case so I had to cut it out. I'll glue or epoxy this back in a later episode. You can remove the Apple logo with something like a toothpick or a paper clip so you can clean under the batch or make sure it doesn't get damaged while retrobreading the parts. Now I have this filthy case. I first decided to remove this sticker. Now a couple of my viewers have actually requested me to keep this sticker on there because they like how it looks and I kind of agree so I saved the sticker. I actually did some research on the store or company on this sticker and I believe that it were three computer stores here in Belgium that went bankrupt in the 90s. I could be completely wrong though. I, I then cleaned the case. using water and soap and using stuff like toothbrushes to get into the hard to reach places.
After cleaning it, the case looked much better. There are still some scuffs and black spots on the case that I can't seem to get out for now though. This case is pretty beat up. We'll be addressing that in a future episode. I gave this screen a clean. This has to be one of the most burnt in CRTs I own. And I put the whole thing back together for now so that I can actually use it. Why isn't the speaker back in the machine? Uh, you know what, I'll probably just connect it up to the motherboard, uh, but I won't, will not be gluing it back into place because it'll only be a matter of maybe days or weeks or okay, maybe a couple of months, I know, but right now I'm too lazy to glue this back into the machine with some epoxy or hot glue. Uh, the number one reason being, I still need to retrobrite this and I don't wanna take off the speaker or take off the glue every time I take this machine apart. So. We'll look into that, but I think it's kind of a waste of time to keep are you gluing this speaker back into the case then. Um, you know, when it's completely restored, then I'll put it back. Then made a couple of double-sided discs, or rather tricked the floppy drive into thinking that these 1.4 megabyte discs are double-sided discs. Played some games and adjusted some settings. Okay, that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this episode of iApple Guy. Now, I first want to address something that I said in my last video all the way back in the beginning of March. Now, I was gonna release some videos for um, Marchintage, the event, but I actually didn't do that um, because I simply didn't have enough time. Um, mainly because I had high school exams. So, now about the SE. The SE is far from perfect. Um, I'll recap the analog board. Um, but I'm not sure if I'll recap the logic board since it's, you know, one of the logic boards without the infamous SMD capacitors, but I'm sure that it could use a recap, so we'll look into that. So yeah, more episodes on this machine are coming though. Um, I'll maybe replace the DIMM CRT uh, because I can't rejuvenate it, besides getting another CRT would be the better option anyways. Now the machine also seems to have some scuffs and marks that didn't come out when cleaning the case uh, and it's yellow so we'll look into cleaning that and retrobreading the case. But if you like this kind of content then please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video and if you want more content like this you can also follow all of my social media or if you want to talk to me and some fellow tech enthusiasts you can join my discord server. Links are in the description and then I'll see you in the future.